Hi guys, we're Mac Built Prado. Today I'm here with Tristan, and this is his. We've got a 2009 uh, VDJ 78 trip carrier. Yes, and this is a big rundown. Hope you enjoy. Oh, just too, too early for this. <laughs> Okay, so we're at the front end of this monster. Um, what bar we got here? So I think it's the older model uh, ARB Deluxe full bar. Yep. Um, it came with the car, but yep. when I bought the vehicle, I wrapped and coated all the bar work. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, we thinned it down a little bit so the yeah. texture's not as um, aggressive. Aggressive, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's worked pretty well. Um, pretty keeps, durable. Keeps the rust proof as well. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. It's quite good. Steady Type X Pros. Yep. Um, really yeah. happy with them. They look nice. The orange covers. Uh, okay. They sort of take away the glare of the um, yeah. of road signs. You don't see too many of them. No, anyway, and it's no. a little bit different and sort of goes yeah. with the, you know, say the, the orange, orange sort of theme. accent theme of the car. Match tracks on the roof. Yep. I like it. Yep. Yeah. Um, and runs a winch. Yeah. Um, Which one's that one? 13 XP. 13 XP. So yeah. 13,000 pounds. Yeah, they're really good, um, those ones. She's a heavy girl, so. Um, How many? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, it's it's nudging the GBM, so we'll just yep. say that. Yep, um, but yeah, uh, haven't had to use it yet, so yeah, but it's great. always good to have as a precaution. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then obviously you got so because it's an ARB Deluxe, you get the fog lights and you the, get the foggies there. The steady um, oh, inserts, yeah. so they've got daytime oh, running yeah. lights in there as well. Yeah, um, awesome. Yeah, they're actually they're they're Bluetooth specials at the moment, so oh, wow. uh, wi wireless. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fair. Same same with the steady light bar on the on the roof. Wireless oh, light bar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've got a distribution sort of switching panel that I'm yeah. going to put everything into and rewire everything yeah, later. Yeah, so okay. it's a work in progress as all four wheel drives are, but yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. But these, these are wired up at the moment and I'm very happy with those. Oh, so they're not blue tick? No, they're no, not blue okay. no. oh, <laughs> yeah. So with, with the GME XRS running um, the 2.1 DBI, like stumpy aerial, um, which is sort of good for hills and undul undulations, um, I may get the 6.6 um, attachment so you can just undo some undo a couple of um, grub screws there and your bigger aerial slides in, so which works for longer distances and when you're traveling in convoys and stuff. So uh, running Nitto trail grapplers in a 315-7516, um, I think in Imperial that translates to just under 35s, but for argument's sake they're 35s. Um, it came with an old man emu two inch lift, um, which the shocks are getting quite tired, so the, a new lift or you know, new suspension setup will be the next big ticket item that I do on this vehicle. But for now, it sort of it serves its purpose and you know, still works. And rims, uh, dynamic 16 by 8 steelies. I went steelies just for the pure fact that if you bend a rim out bush, you can just bash it back into shape with a hammer. So um, instead of having an alloy and cracking it, so and they're cheaper significantly. Zero F sets on the front and neg 50s on the back, which basically corrects the wheel track issue that 70 series Land Cruisers has unfortunately come with. Okay, so we're on the side of the big beast here. So um, so this is just a, what scrub bar is this? Yeah, it's just ARB deluxe scrub bar, um, wrapped and coated with all the other bar work as well. Takes um, the car. Takes the car, looks good. Um, helps you get access into the car easily. Yeah, it's quite high this thing, <laughs> very high. <laughs> and then what snorkel we got here? Uh, so J-Max stainless snorkel. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty happy with the clean look of that. Yeah. Um, there is a debate whether forward-facing snorkels are better than rear-facing, yeah, but that is true. Yeah, that's you're not going to notice a difference too much, in my opinion. But, yeah, yeah um, looks good. Matches the black and everything. Yeah, else. yeah. Sort of goes into the colour theme of everything. Yeah, um, Rhino, two point eight meter platform. It's massive. Um, it's it's quite big. I've yeah, seen this big before. It's they actually don't specifically make them for a troop carrier, but yeah. they. Um, I've forgotten where I got this one from, but they give you some angled adaptive brackets to basically take up this gap where the roof mm. tapers down here so it allows you to run a nice long rack. It's very good because yeah. you see a lot of troopies that have the rack but it only goes it's sort of, yeah, they ends end from there. there. I just think it doesn't look right. Yes, it's long roof but it looks way better when it comes to the front. 
So I think you've done well there. I Thank like you. Um, <laughs> and the light bar sort of fills that gap in oh, between yeah. here. It does look a little bit... Because it would be quite big. Yeah. The, yeah. the sort of gap between the roof looks a bit odd. So yeah, that's that sort enough. of serves the dual purpose there as well. And are these, so are these stock mirrors? They are. Yeah, factory, just GXL mirrors. Yeah. Um, They're not like the old farmer ones? No. Like big ones. I have, I'm sort of debating whether to get some yeah. towing mirrors for it. But some Clevies or something. Yeah, MSA but or. it's a sort of quite runny dial here. They look like Dumbo ears hanging off the side. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, for now, like I haven't hit anything while reversing, so you know, yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's a big old bus. I mean, if you obviously hit it with a tree, then you might have a good reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but we can yeah. arrange that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, obviously, so this for me is the key thing in this car makes it stand out everywhere is this stripe and the colours of the stripes. Not like your typical, like what? What's the typical one? Like orange, uh, yellow. Yeah. Probably the red. Yeah. So this is sunset a bit more stripes. Yeah, so it's not a factory stripe. Came from a company called Body Mold Signs. I think they're based in New South Wales somewhere. Um, and this is a generic design they have. Um, there so are a few. You can get this, yeah. Yeah, there are a few troopies getting around with the same stripes. Yeah. Um, I love the way it follows the lines over the arms. Yeah, and you got, you got the Z, Z pattern there, which looks quite yeah. nice. Yeah. And obviously these colours match the orange and your lights, tracks, indicators. Like this sort of ties in together nicely with the light. The sort of theme I was going with anyway. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. So on the side, I've got a Cruiser Company lift up uh, Goldwing, Goldwing panel. Um, sort of just allows easier access inside uh, the vehicle just instead of having to undo the real car wheel carriers and open both barn doors. Um, you know, quite easy to chuck the dogs in there if you need easy access for throwing shopping or whatever. This is a daily driver at the moment, so um, makes it easier when going to the supermarket and whatever. Um, and also just as you you know when you're camping and laying inside just to pop the side and have a nice view out the windows makes it makes it a bit more easier as well um, and I've got I think it's a kick-ass uh, shower tent I've defaced the <laughs> label and put vinyl dye over the top of it just for a bit more of a cleaner look um, so yeah sorry about the free advertising there kick-ass kick so around the back we've got a cruiser company rear bar um, I think it's their first generation one when they first started making them and um, I'm really happy with it they're a really good company to deal with uh, they made a couple of adjustments to allow for um, got a front runner ladder, so they angled this um, bracket here for the wheel carrier to, to fit that. Um, so yeah, really good to deal with in the cruise company. Um, and I've also got their little wheel platform here as well, just handy to sort of chuck firewood on. Or I've got a like a steel box that goes on top for long trips um, to put recovery gear in there and just chuck dirty things and whatever if you don't want them inside the vehicle. Um, so yeah, full size spare, drifter, wheel bag. Um, I think I might change to a crash pad one that the um, back tracks and slide slide down in. So that will just sort of free up a bit of space off the, um, the roof rack and make them a bit more easily accessible. There's also a Thorburns 40 litre water tank just tucked up inside the rear bar in between the sub tank and the rear bar. Um, so for longer trips, um, if I don't want to carry a second spare, I've got say 40 litres in jerry cans here and can obviously change that to uh, fuel if need be. Um, but yeah, so potential of 80 litres water carrying capacity or extra diesel as well on top of the 180 litre uh, twin tanks that come from factories. Okay, so we're on the other side here. So what awning is this one? Uh, it's a Darchi Eclipse to 70 degree awning. Yep. Um, just got the legs, but mm. I've found personally in high winds, it has sort of, uh, yeah, worked quite well. Uh, the bag's copped a bit of a beating from, <laughs> um, it's got a few bush pin stripes on it and whatever, but I've had it for a couple of years now and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And um, it's, got the, um, it's got the little triangle at the front. Yeah, yeah, so I think there's like 12 and a half square meters of, of um, good, shade yeah. coverage, so yeah. So it wraps right around here. Yeah, and comes sort of, front. the last leg comes back here a little bit. So yeah, yeah. I've seen this. I've seen them set this up at camp quite a few times, and it's all freestand to set up, isn't that right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So you're not like trying to fire against wind or falling over. Yeah, or your legs come down separately. Um, yeah. In they do say in low, you know, in, when there's no wind, you can use it as a freestanding, but it's not recommended. Do you do that? I do. I've had, okay. Like down the yeah. beach on a calm day, I've I've set it up like that, and I've had no dramas. So. Yeah. Oh, awesome. There yeah. you go.
And then what's what's to go with this? So this is a, I think it's a Thorburn's um, accessory panel. I've just got a little 12 volt cigarette plug here oh, that yeah. my um, that my lights plug into for under the awning. Oh, and yes. there's an Anderson connection here uh, for a secondary um, solar. solar regulator. Yep. Yeah. So if the car's parked in the shade, I've got a solar blank blanket that can run out on a 10 meter lead. Um, yep. Just to top up the batteries. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, what's in there? Is that just one of that's the uh, Yeah, that's... You, you can add yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can add stuff yeah, in there. You can cool. put a, a water valve or something in there, but that's all I've, that's cool. I've needed so far. Yeah, I love yeah. it how, like these, they look factory almost. Yeah, but they, they just, just replace the rear vents. It's such a good idea yep. to get all your stuff on the outside. I love it. Okay, so we're obviously at the rear of the trophy now. This is where all the, the magic happens, all the party happens. This is where the whole setup is. So, so run us run us through what's going on here. Yeah, so I built the fit out uh, from 12 mil marine ply. Um, all yourself, and all myself, all yep. custom, custom yep. built. Awesome. Yep. Um, so I've got a drop down rear table here. Yep. Um, little handle there to hang your um, tea towels and That's whatever. Awesome. Um, wow. little, little spice rack in there. Oh yeah. Olive oil. Um, yep. Fuel for the gasless cooker that I've got. Oh um, yes. yes. And then also a little slide out. Cool. Um, That's awesome. Look at that. Extra little slide out table there for yeah. more prep room. I love the um, little like aluminium. Yeah, it's, that's there. 304 stainless yep. um, okay. or 3 317 or whatever the with yeah. whatever the grade is. So that sort of makes it easier for putting um, pot pots and whatever on there yeah. without burning your your plywood. So that's that's worked out quite well and Did easy to clean. Take pretty long to build or. I spent a lot of time on this, um, was, just trying to get yeah, the niches right and cutting cool. the internal sort of, um, you know, cutting the internal sort of supports and reinforcement out of yeah. the inside of the door because they originally had the spare wheel hanging off them. So oh, that was quite fiddly. Um, that's I'd, fair. Yeah, I'd probably spend more time on this table than anything else. Wow. Um, but it's sort of, the masterpiece. Yeah, everyone, it, everyone's going to see it. It does. It does what it, it does what it want, I wanted to do. So it's, yeah. it's turned out well. I'm pretty happy with it. And then these. So these are an Instagram company, aren't they? Yeah, oh, um, cool. I believe so. Yeah, Outback Gear Solutions. Um, yeah. Really, really good products. I've got their. I've, I think this is called the Big Red cooking gear, and um, you know, got uh, I think all my lights, all my like yes. plugs and stuff for my camp lights, front of the camp lights under there. Keep yeah. coffee gear in here, yeah. uh, and on the opposite side, sort of toiletries and odds and ends go in this one here. Um, yeah. Also got sort of paper towel holder here, That's sort of cool. makes it easier um, instead of trying to stuff it inside a drawer. Yeah, <laughs> makes Always it easier available. to get to. You need those tea towel and that sort of stuff on the ready. Exactly. So uh, the main drawer here is sort of for kitchen and um, storage, main storage, and they're on 1500 mil uh, heavy duty sliders, rated to 227 kilo or something. And just inside, I have the crush pad. Um, kitchen bag and a heap of crash pods as well which sort of contain all sort of non-perishable foods that don't need to be refrigerated um, and then stainless platform that sort of slides back and forth for a prep surface um, really comes in handy doesn't uh, as meant that we don't need to carry an extra sort of large table and everything can sort of be very well self-contained um, so that sort of yeah slides away nicely on the other side, there's another drawer here that's just on Teflon slides. Um, I've got a Helinox sort of like fold-out table that sits in there, rattle gun, tools, sort of any random odds and ends that sort of need to be carried in there. As far as uh, cooking is concerned, um, we've got this big old sort of green looking tin suitcase here that's um, uh, what's called a Coleman dual fuel stove. Um, it means that we don't need to carry a gas bottle with us because this little reservoir at the front front here um, can be filled up with sort of where what we use is shellite, which is um, essentially lighter fluid, but you can use unleaded fuel, kerosene or any sort of white spirit, flammable spirit. So it sort of keeps the weight down um, and you know, as far as safety is concerned, you don't need to carry a gas bottle or worry about it being stolen or whatever. Um, so yeah, this, this thing works quite well. Um, boils water really quickly in the morning for a coffee. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with it. So the fridge is a Dometic 75, like CFX3 75 litre fridge. I found that it's better to have a, a bigger fridge than smaller, um, although it does chew a fair bit of power when it's working hard in summer. Um, and you know, you can select whether you want a fridge or a freezer or, or both. Got the Sirocco 
a gimbal fan so that spins around you can adjust it sort of where you want it it's nice and quiet works quite well on warm nights it sort of helps circulate the air quite well um, probably one of the most practical additions I've made to the car is this um, droopy gear overhead shelf um, they are really good sort of up-and-coming company and uh, they were really really great to deal with um, we found that we had our storage or our clothes in storage under the mattress here which was a bit of a pain to try and get in and out on a day-to-day -day basis on longer trips so the shelf um, we keep all our, yeah, all our clothes and stuff on the shelf it makes it more easily accessible um, my partner covered the, the mattresses here we just got a high density foam mat mattress from Clark Rubber and glued a mattress topper like an eggshell mattress topper on top for a bit of extra comfort and we just got some fabric from um, from Spotlight for the mattress and the curtains and, and um, yeah she she made those up at home and sort of we went for the L-shape configuration so we sleep up here sort of one of us has to sleep on a bit of an angle to sort of go around the fridge which isn't it is more of a compromise but we found that just on the trips that we do it's comfortable enough um, maybe one day we'd look at getting a decent rooftop tent or maybe do a roof conversion but for now um, sort of as to keep it a bit more budget friendly this this setup works quite well <laughs> So this is what the bones of the fit out looks like. Um, each inv individual compartment is modular, so it's sort of easy to install um, and uninstall if need be. Um, the center section here just sort of lifts up and slides under the mattress if you want to have a like a more of a couch set up here. Um, lift up areas for extra storage in here. Um, and then at the front, I've got all my electrical um, batteries and distribution board there, and another big um, storage compartment in front of the fridge and behind the driver's seat there as well. Uh, also got the switch panel for, um, got hardcore lights up around the edge of the roof there, um, and they do they good, do a good job, they're dimmable, and they've got the um, amber function as well, uh, to sort of keep the insects away too. The curtains just sort of roll up and slide down or um, yeah, roll down in front of the windows here and they, they block out the sun quite well. It's also got a uh, 5% sort of what they call ambulance tent on the windows as well which sort of helps with uh, keeping inside temps down and privacy as well. So as far as um, the 12 volt system goes, um, running just a single uh, iTech 120 amp with a Victron 30 amp DC DC charger, two separate uh, solar regulators. So there's a Victron 130 solar reg, like uh, blue, oh no, smart solar MPPT, and that's running two hardcore 170 watt panels on the roof. And there's a smaller 120 solar regulator for the uh, accessory port on the side with just a King's 200 watt solar blanket, which sort of helps the battery get topped up when the car's parked in the shade. Um, also have here an accessory, well yeah, 240 volt outlet for an inverter that I'm about to install. And then there's the Victron display for a smart shunt there. And water level um, sort of gauge for the 40 litre tank underneath the rear bar. And all the, yes, all the Victron accessories can be monitored through an app via, via Bluetooth. And it's sort of just quite easy to check and see what your loads are doing, uh, inputs and outputs, and sort of how your battery health is going as well. So yeah, here we have the two 170 watt um, hardcore panels, which are wired in series. And here I have just some square tube that I made up that sort of allows for us to put our kayak on the roof. And it just gives it a bit of a gap um, so the you know the kayak doesn't sit on the panels physically and protects them um, and yeah that makes it makes it easy to throw on the roof and carry around if we need to so in the interior um, we've got Razorback uh, seat covers neoprene seat covers over uh, FG XR6 seats we're using the Huracan adapters um, they're definitely much more comfortable than the factory Toyota seats um, I'd love to get a set of Recaro's or Shulman seats or something like that, but that's definitely not on the budget, so they're a good compromise for now. Um, got a Dometic CF11 um, fridge freezer in here, just for, you know, can use it as a dedicated fridge or freezer. Um, it's really handy and also doubles as a, as a you know, center console armrest, so added extra comfort because um, 
yeah, these, these interiors are not known for their creature comforts. Um, got Connect 4x4 armrests um, with cup holders, and they sort of, yeah, definitely add to extra comfort of the interior and, and a bit of extra storage and space for drinks as well. Um, really, really happy with them. Um, Kenwood Apple CarPlay head unit. It's a little bit glitchy, so I think I might change to something different, but for now it still does the job. Um, and then GME XRS UHF, thing's been great, really, really happy with it. Um, and up the top, this came with the vehicle when I bought it, but I'm not sure of the, the company that makes this over the head roof console, but this thing's gold. Um, yeah, great for, you know, extra storage. We keep cameras and drones and stuff up in here. Um, and overhead compartments in front of your, you know, of your headspace here as well is really, really handy. Um, and yeah, that's no, sort of, you've got to add a thing, few things to these, like to 70 series to make them comfortable. But once, like there's plenty of great companies out there that do make good accessories to, you know, make your cab experience a bit better. Running a quad lock uh, mount with the wireless charging, um, that's, that's really handy, really, really happy with it. So, and yeah, with the stereo, got uh, Rockford 6x9s um, in the doors with like a little uh, adapter pod here that use, utilizes the factory map pockets um, and also got a um, 10 inch slimline sub behind the driver's seat. Okay, so we're at the engine. Uh, anything much happening in here? Or? Uh, yeah, it's stock internal, stock turbo, but it does have, uh, it's had an engine remap um, by oh, a company yeah. called JTEC. I've had two, this is the second vehicle I've had done by them and um, yeah, they've done a really, really good job. Hasn't been on the dyno, but um, uh, sort of cars with similar power figures have got around the sort of the 200 horsepower yep. and uh, you know 600 odd newton meters of torque at the wow, wheels. That's pretty cool. Um, so it's definitely a, a, you know, an upgrade from stock. Um, yeah, wow. And just, pre, you know, as precaution, it's got a pro vent catch can and a uh, second, like secondary fuel filter there as well. Um, yep. Protect the engine. Yeah, yep. Sort of just protect everything in case you get some dirty fuel and whatever. And um, it yeah. has also had an intake clean, um, yeah. cleaned all the gunk and, and um, mm. carbon build up on the inside of the intake. So that was done at around 220,000 k's. Um, yeah. And yeah, every time we're doing all change now, they're always just gold. Like oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not black like diesel, like your know, sooty and diesel yeah. white like normally. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think in the future I might get a front mount intercooler, uh, maybe oh, do. Put that there. Yep, yep, yep. Just, for, yeah, just right. to keep those EGTs down. Yep. Um, maybe a turbo upgrade and injectors, but for now, that you know, I really don't need any more power. It, 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 it sort of puts in well enough for what it is, so I'm pretty happy with it. It went up that hill climb that one time, pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put that clip in now, you'll see it goes up this massive hill. And it yeah. does have a, it came with a 3 inch, three inch mild steel exhaust oh, yep. um, when I bought it and I just uh, deleted the muffler out of it so it's just, it's got the cat converter and that's it. And this yeah. is pre-PDF? Pre-DPF, pre yeah. And you can so, tell by the, the bonnet skip. Yes, right. yes. He yep. told me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay guys, so that's the end of the rundown. Hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Absolute animal under here. Now, if you guys want to have any questions about the build or anything, feel free to follow us on Instagram, which is? Yeah, it's Australis. So, Australia without <laughs> the a, without the A on the end, it's an S. Australis underscore escapes. So yeah, feel free to message us. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description as well if you want to follow it and uh, continue watching the build. But yeah, um, till the next time, that's the uh, end of the video. Thanks for coming along. No worries, man. Thanks, and, Maddie. Um, yeah, we'll uh, see you guys next time on Built Prado.